Hi, welcome to today's virtual bridge session. Today we're joined by Simon from Sparks, who will be talking about student engagement. Really, really the engagement of, of staff with student in more of a partnership sense. And it's good timing because Sparks have just launched a, a toolkit to help us with that. Um, something I probably could have done with when I was teaching. <laughs> so, Simon, tell us more. Thank you very much, Kenji. Great to be with you. And uh, thanks to CDN and JISC for the, the invite to uh, this virtual bridge session. So yes, I'm, I, I, I may well have some answers. I may also be throwing these back to you to try to think up the answers yourselves um, in true consultant style, um, because sometimes I, I love hearing other people's answers to these sorts of questions. So yes, um, what I'm going to be talking about is um, the idea of exploring student engagement with academic staff, which is the topic of a new toolkit we've developed in Sparks um, as, a, as a resource for developing uh, professional development materials, staff development materials to help staff reflect on and uh, learn about what they're gaining from students through, 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 through a partnered learning experience. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm Simon Varwell, as, as Kenji said, I, I work for Sparks, so it, it is good to have an alliterative name. Um, and um, what I'm going to do over the next wee while is uh, fundamentally three things. First of all, I'll tell you a little bit about this toolkit, unpack it for you um, and, and, and help you explore it. Secondly, we're going to dive into it and uh, do a couple of activities within it. And if you're watching on video, and a special hello to those of you watching on video, uh, you can have a go um, yourself um, at, at what, what we go through. And, um, and then thirdly, we'll conclude by looking at what you, what you could do with this toolkit if you want to run with it and make the most of it in, in your college uh, and in, in the network that you're a part of. So, in terms of finding the, uh, the resource, um, I've posted a link in the chat to those joining the uh, event today. Um, but otherwise, if you go to the Sparks website and under supporting institutions, there's the staff development section. And from there, there's a link to um, exploring student engagement with academic staff. And you can click that link or there is the direct address if you fancy uh, typing that out individually. And you'll see that, uh, as I'll explain in a moment, there's six parts to the toolkit, but there's a set of user guidance, which is about going to be eight pages just to set the scene and explain the toolkit. So it's worth having a read of that first before you jump into any of the six sections. Just to explain a little bit more about Sparks, I suspect a lot of you watching will, will know who we are and will have heard of us. Uh, we're Student Partnerships in Quality Scotland. Uh, we're funded by the Funding Council to be the National Agency for Student Engagement. So we're, we're one of the kind of permanent recognised sector agencies and we work with all our other fellow sector agencies, including College Development Network and, and many others across the university sector, of course, uh, as well, because we work with uh, across both the uh, further and higher education sectors and, of course, with students associations, too. And in a sense, we, we do what our name says. I always think we're like the Ron Seal advert. So we, we do what it says in the tin. We're all about building partnership and quality. Um, and as you might imagine, that splits into two areas of work, one about supporting students to engage with quality. Um, and if you've heard of us for one thing, it's usually our class rep training and our support for class rep training. So how can class reps represent the views of those uh, people in their class um, about the learning experience and then take those views into the, into the quality assurance systems that college colleges run. And the second half of that, uh, which is really what we're talking about today, is about equipping staff um, to think about what they can learn from their students and how they can make the tools and processes of engagement and quality accessible to students and, and build that partnership from there. And so that all adds up to a variety of training and briefings and publications and events and all sorts of consultancy and support. And there's more about that on our website. And the best way of getting at that sense of partnership is by looking at the idea of partnership as a balance. And fundamentally, we, we and I say this, the, the sparks we, but I think also the, the, the broader Royal Scottish we uh, talk about partnership as really um, qu about a balance between two extremes. If we imagine uh, a learning experience that is student led, where 
staff really don't have a role except that of being a mere customer service assistant delivering everything that the, that the students demand and the students are always right, then I don't think that's a particularly appealing world to be in. It might be liberating in some ways, but it's, it's, it's um, um, I think, missing the fact that staff might have some valid contributions to make from time to time. <laughs> At the other extreme, however, if our if our if our learning experience and, and 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 the kind of ethos of our sector was entirely staff led, then that puts staff, particularly teaching staff, on a bit of a pedestal. And of course, staff are geniuses. Of, of course, they are. But by definition, um, you, you know, that you, you wouldn't be in your job as a staff member if you weren't a genius at what you're doing. But you're not an unreachable genius. Um, nobody nobody has no capacity to learn. Nobody has. 100% of the knowledge that they need. Um, and, and in that world where students are merely the empty vessels into whom we pour knowledge, there's no sense of criticality or reflection from the students. They just take that knowledge unthinkingly um, and um, perhaps don't even apply it or, or, or use it in any way. They just have that knowledge. So we, we I think, uh, and, and tell, tell me in the chat box if you uh, disagree with this, I think we reject these two extremes and we reject the implications of these two extremes for the role that staff play. Instead, what we have is the idea of, of staff and students as co-creators. Um, so students across the diversity of roles and demographics and subject areas, types of institutions, types of campuses, uh, ways of learning, um, and staff across all their different academic support management roles um, both have a responsibility and the right to co-create the learning experience. And that means that there is a lot to learn from each other. Staff and students need to learn from each other um, and, and, and have, have lots to bring to each other. So that's the ethos I think that is behind our sector. I, it is also the ethos that drives the toolkit I'm about to talk about. So we've talked about partnership an, an, an awful lot and we've re rejected I hope these two extremes we can also see partnership as a bit less binary and a bit more on a, on a developmental scale um, and part of that idea of, of, of listening and to, to, to what students have to say comes into here uh, at the bottom of the ladder you see the idea of students as, as information providers and the example there is, is completing surveys but there's lots of other ways of providing information sending an email replying to an email speaking up in class, um, attending a forum or a focus group, or um, somehow giving your views about what the learning experience is like. And we would hope, I think, that all students would do that. Um, but not every student particularly gets involved in shaping what those questions might be. So while all students will fill out a survey, perhaps less students will help to write a survey or will analyze the results of the survey or get involved in the decision about whether actually it even is a survey. Should it be a conversation or a meeting or, you know, a VLE thread or, you know, some sort of asynchronous discussion. So there's all sorts of roles that students can play in a, in a more active way on that second rung of the ladder in perhaps thinking a little bit more critically about the tools of feedback um, in terms of the input uh, and the mechanism, but also the output. Students sometimes bring new perspectives to data and say, well, actually, yeah, if, if nine out of 10 people like that thing in that survey, here's what the one out of 10 are telling me, or here's why I think the nine out of 10 like it, and here's where, here's where we could improve, or, you know, you know what, I'm not shocked by that result. Or for me, it's that bit of data that's the priority. That's the thing that I'm concerned about rather than that. So you can develop a really good conversation with students there by enabling them to have a more active role. And that's a ladder I personally believe class reps are particularly well equipped to play in terms of getting into the nuts and bolts of feedback. Linking into the idea of students um, and staff learning from each other is the idea of the student as an expert. Now, obviously, the staff is an expert um, in, in, in their job and in the process of teaching and, and, and running a college and shaping a learning experience. St students are experts, too, in the life that they lead, the background that they have, the, 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 the personality and the background that they bring into the learning experience and what that means for, for example, certain demographics or certain campuses and subject areas. Um, and in a, in a world like the last 15 months where staff and students haven't quite been in the same room as each other as much as they might, that expertise is particularly valuable because there's been that disconnect. So the idea of students speaking with that expertise about what it's like to study 
um, and what it's like to learn, particularly through a pandemic, is and should be particularly valuable for staff. So there's a particular learning for staff over the last year or so in terms of what the learning experience is like. And if you can get a little bit beyond that idea of students merely giving an expert perspective to them actually being at the table making the decision, then they become a partner. So to, you, to use a, a legal metaphor, you might have an expert in a trial. They'll come along, they'll give their scientific expert expertise, for example, and then they'll leave the room and the judge and jury decide what to happen. So even the expert in the courtroom isn't helping to make the decision, they're merely informing it, but the student as partner at the top of the ladder is engaged in much more of an authentic and constructive dialogue where um, they're exploring the, stu the, the, the student experience with staff. And that fundamentally is, is the, the, the rationale that lies behind our um, toolkit, exploring student engagement with academic staff. And there are two aims to it. Firstly, it's kind of linking to quality. And secondly, it's linking to staff development. And, and, and really, those two complement each other. So firstly, the, the toolkit aims to help staff think about what the student's role is in self-evaluation and in quality enhancement. Um, particularly at a time where the student view is, is, is more important than ever. And secondly, the aim of the toolkit is to help uh, staff and students and colleges and students associations to work together to create some materials for staff that are appropriate to particular contexts. So what we haven't done with this toolkit, and I think this is one of the, the key points to make about the toolkit, what we haven't done is produced some materials that you can use. What we've done is produced some materials that you can adapt and make into your own. So you don't want to be delivering stuff with the Sparks logo on and you don't want to be using the language we do. Uh, we want you to be using the language um, that you use um, within your context, your priorities. And we'll have a think at the end of my talk about the kind of things that you need to think about to use these materials more um, relevantly. So the six elements of the toolkit beyond this user guidance that we've got a screenshot of, the six topics which consist of um, some suggested slides and some kind of user notes um, for each of those. Um, and you can play around with those and make them your own. The first one is about understanding the, the student learning experience, which is a, a seven point diagram we have at the heart of our course rep training, where we talk about curriculum and learning resources and assessment and uh, guidance and support and all the areas that we want students to be commenting on. And so it's an opportunity for staff to get stuck into that diagram and, and think about how they can work with students to learn about the learning experience. Um, the second part is about um, assessment methods. So students have lots of views these days about what assessment should look like. Um, it's very difficult to do a two hour exam when you're you know, stuck at home and studying in your bedroom, for example. And you know, were two hour exams ever a really good way of assessing learning anyway? <laughs> Discuss, answers in the comments. So this, this, that, that chapter uh, helps think through what assessment could look like. And um, thirdly, it's about the data and surveys that you've been um, generating around the learning experience and how can staff learn from that for their practice um, and, and learn about what students are saying about it. The fourth one is, is broadly about annual monitoring, course monitoring. So what have you learned from students um, and how have you enhanced your, your course over the year and what does that mean for next year? So it's basically how to reflect on your practice and look ahead to next year's teaching. The fifth one is about understanding the role of the course rep. So obviously we provide course rep training in Sparks and um, what's sometimes missing is telling staff about those course reps and what they do and how to work with them. And then sixthly, the role of the Students Association. And thanks to initiatives such as the Developing College Students Associations Project, which is SFC funded and, and managed by NUS and Sparks, um, to re basically respond to the implications of regionalization in terms of strong and effective students associations, that question is, is, is ever more important. And sometimes staff don't really know about the Students Association. It can be a little bit of a mystery. So that's what the sixth chapter is about. How can you use the toolkit? Well, here's just a, a few suggestions of where the toolkit might land in terms of, 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 of the spaces and the needs that it might meet. And I'll, I'll not go through all of them. They're, they're fairly self-explanatory. And you know, as the, 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 the bottom right box suggests, there's maybe other contexts that you can think of that we couldn't think of for this slide. So um, th there's a mixture of formal and informal um, tools. There's a mixture of 
um, synchronous and asynchronous, um, kind of more learning experiences versus sort of perhaps softer networking you might get at a conference. And also there's a mixture of using this toolkit with just staff as a, as a purely staff development activity and with students as well, depending on the context. So that's just a little sense and, you know, shout out or post in the chat box if you could think of another use as we go. So that's enough waffle from me about the toolkit and the background and the, the, the theory and the content. Let's have a go at one of the exercises. So let's first of all pick something from chapter four, reviewing course innovations and adjustments. And what we have in this section, and again, you can adapt it to your own needs, are two questions. Firstly, reflecting on student feedback to think about what went well over the, the duration of a learning experience. So um, uh, there's four questions within, within this heading. First of all, have a think about something that you, you have, have, have introduced over the last year, perhaps in response to the pandemic. Um, that's had a beneficial impact for students. So as you're watching this video, just get out your notepad and sketch down something that you think within your responsibility, and this might be national, it might be institutional, you might be working within a particular department or a, a, an individual course or a unit or module, uh, and you've made some adjustments to that um, to hopefully improve the student experience and the student learning experience. So have a think about what that might be, and then have a think about who that has most strongly um, uh, impacted on and who it's mostly helped. Now that might have been intentional because you might have introduced it specifically to help um, students with caring responsibilities or part-time students or something like that, but you might have incidentally helped some other students as well. So have a think about what that might be, and then try to articulate why that was beneficial and what the difference was in terms of people's learning experiences. And then finally, any further adjustments that would make it even more beneficial. So what were your lessons from that? And you can link that to your own practice and your own learning and your own professional development in terms of the, um, the things that you now need to do. So that's one half of the exercise. The second half of the exercise is um, uh, even better if, so actually, well, well, hopefully it will have been successful. What else could you do? Um, so firstly, um, can you think of something that you adjusted in your role? And again, that might be course level or department or college wide or national. Can you think of something that didn't quite work or it didn't work in the way that you intended? Um, um, or maybe you've not quite seen the results yet. So have a think about something that, yeah, could, could, have, could have been better. Um, and, and, and who did that affect and, and why in terms of what are the obstacles that they're facing in terms of, of, of accessing this change or benefiting from this change? And then thirdly, how might you overcome that obstacle? So this is really getting into problem solving, reflecting. How do we get staff to look at the evidence that they've got and measure impact and think about what they've done and um, look, look at what might work next? And then finally, how, how could that further adjustment be beneficial? So I'll let, I'll let folks shout out if they wish. I'll let folk put comments in the chat. Feel free to share some examples. Now, as I say, this may have been relating to a particular module. You might have changed something in the terms of the way that assessment worked. You might have um, rethought a particular strategy that you're responsible for, be that, you know, I don't know, the, the VLE will, will have been very important or library services, something like that, student services. Um, we've thought about all the different ways that we've had to adjust in terms of um, responding to digital poverty and, and, and the needs for equipment. So how can we um, think about the impact of what we've done and link that to our uh, practice? And have a think about how that links into you, to your own individual learning and how you can learn from students. So that's one exercise. Because we've got time, let's do another exercise. And we're going to get a little bit more interactive here. I'm going to ask you all to do some annotation on the next slide. So I'm going to suggest that we have a look at the role of the course representative. Um, because you know th th they've been proved over this year to be ever more important um, in terms of giving the views of students. 
And one exercise we have in this toolkit that you can adapt again to your own needs is this grid of possible roles for course reps over the course of the year. So um, you, you might find that course reps are designed to be in a take on a particular role, a particular kind of ethos or responsibility that may or may not have changed in the past year because of the, 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 um, uh, the events of the, that we've gone through in terms of the pandemic, the different ways that course reps have worked. So on this grid, you will see a bunch of labels. Some of them you'll probably like. Some of them are fairly unremarkable. Some of them are a bit left field and a bit provocative. Um, so, and some of them you won't like. So it's not, but what I'd like you to do is go up to your menu bar and you should have an annotation button. Um, and um, what I'd like you to do is try to annotate the screen using the stamps. So you'll see under annotation, there's stamps and there's different ones that you can use to reflect um, uh, your views on things. So for example, you might want to use a tick to say, yeah, I've seen that, I like that, it's good, that's quite effective. You might want to use the cross to say, well, actually, I saw that and I don't like it. I think that's a terrible rule for students, but I have seen it happen over the course of the year. Um, you might use the star, for example, to show that it's particularly an important one or the heart to show it's one that it's a rule that you particularly love students to take, or maybe the question mark because you're not sure. So, um, so we can see, for example, that we've uh, somewhat someone has identified representative as a role that the course rep has taken. Now that's fairly uncontroversial. I think we would all like to see that because the, cl the class rep should be literally representing the views of students at um, a course committee meeting or in informal conversations with staff. Um, very interesting, somebody's identified the, the idea of negotiator as something they particularly love. Now that's important because a representative shouldn't merely represent the views and say, look, here's a visa students, cheerio. Um, there should actually be a conversation building on that. So saying, well, here's the views of students. They seem to be wanting X, Y, and Z. Is there any chance that we could try this? And, you know, I know things have been difficult, but, you know, could, could we possibly adapt something in this kind of way? So actually at the heart of that conversation, that, that um, authentic and constructive dialogue we talked about at the top of the staircase, is a bit of negotiation, really. Um, so what's achievable and what's realistic? Um, somebody has highlighted with a star the idea of the leader. Now, that's very important because at least at the course level, the course rep is a bit of a student leader. Um, so how can they say, well, actually, this is what we think. This is our view. This is what we'd, we'd love to see happen. Um, uh, evangelist has got a couple of hearts. Um, and that's really interesting. And I suppose we've been slightly sneaky because we've not explained the direction in which they're evangelizing. And it could actually be two ways. Um, first of all, the class rep could be an evangelist for the student interest and the student views at the meeting saying, you know, isn't this exciting? Students believe in this. Can we, can we do this? This would be wonderful. They could also evangelize back to students in terms of, well, this is what's happening in the, in the course committee, the program committee, the student staff, uh, you know, can, um, liaison forum. Um, and this is what the staff are doing. They're wonderful. And this is where we're trying to take the learning experience during the pandemic. So a little bit like a, a, a kind of a go-between to some extent. So it's really interesting to get all your ideas. Um, and I think, you know, let's have a look. Spy, that's coming out pre pretty negatively. The idea that the, the student is coming in as, as that little bit of an interloper into the staff world and spying on what's going on in the quality systems and then reporting back. And you're quite right, I think, the three of you who've given that an X, um, because really there shouldn't be secrets. The idea of partnership is... is all about there not being any kind of exclusive spaces that you need to sneak into through the back door. So yes, if you do see students um, behaving as spies, we need to think about what's wrong there and how that might have come about. So first of all, what roles did you see course reps play? The second exercise um, that you can do, and we'll not annotate this again, this is just to think about, is what do each of these roles mean the staff role is? So let's take that negative example of a spy. So if class reps are behaving like spies, what does that mean staff are having to behave like? 
probably quite defensively, probably quite nervous. They're probably concerned about um, things being misrepresented back to students. Um, perhaps they feel like they're not being trusted. So what do you have to do in terms of your own approaches, your own engagement with students, your own attitudes, your own behaviours, if you're not being trusted? Um, and it's probably not your fault by any stretch of the imagination, but what can you do to build that relationship there? Um, if, the, if the class rep is behaving like a negotiator, does that mean automatically that, well, you're a negotiator as well? Um, and, and, and what's that going to be like? If the student is a diplomat, what does that mean for you? Um, if the student is being a bit of a rebel or, you know, or whatever, what does that mean in terms of the staff um, uh, reaction to what students are saying? And what does that mean for how staff need to behave around the table to best support the student? And, and, and you know, it may be a literal table in terms of a committee meeting. It might be more of a virtual table if you're talking about uh, an online thread or a bit more of an open forum or, or chats in class or whatever. So hopefully this is getting you thinking about what you like and don't like about class reps. And hopefully it's getting you thinking about the kinds of roles that staff can be taking as well and should be taking. And then there's a further exercise that you can unpack there in terms of how you develop those skills and capacities about, about staff. And is there a conversation to be had about how staff can shape and co-create the course rep training? Because it might be that if there's any negative um, behaviors creeping through on this diagram, you know, let's say people are behaving like spies, is that happening because they're being trained to be spies? And actually, staff can help solve that at the training stage by co-creating um, course rep training. So I'll leave that with you. I'm going to clear all the drawing. In fact, yeah, I, I might just take a screenshot of that because I, I do like those ideas. Um, and then I'm going to um, clear all the drawings and then we shall move on. A very good comment from Walter in the staff book, but which staff does every lecturer interact with student reps? Well, indeed, um, I think if you attend a course committee, then yes, you will, but not every staff will do. And I think that's really important because sometimes people don't, in, uh, for whatever reason, engage with class reps and therefore the class reps can feel like a little bit of a mystery. So how can you demystify the class rep role and the impact of the class rep role um, for all staff? So yeah, very good point. Um, and actually, you might find that you have different answers for different people. So you know, maybe you want to do this exercise only with program leaders, only with heads of curriculum, um, only with head, heads of support services. And then you could also do it with, le with, with lecturing staff. Um, will you get different answers from part-time lecturing staff who are less likely to be involved in quality processes, for instance, or less likely to have time to go along to meetings or volunteer for other activities around, around quality enhancement? And so you might well find that you get different exercises for this, um, depending on the particular level or the context. So let's move on. Um, and let's get you to reflect either privately or in the chat box, or you could open your mic and interrupt me. First of all, how useful were those exercises in terms of that, that first one we did about um, um, kind of ref reflecting on course improvements? And secondly, that one about the, the, the class rep, the course rep. Um, so how useful did you find those exercises? Um, um, and secondly, where could they be valuable? Just uh, uh, going back to that point about, um, uh, you know, which staff, um, uh, are there some staff that this exercise could be particularly valuable with? And thirdly, importantly, how would you modify them for your context? How would you change the language and the context to, to reflect where you are and what you're doing? And who would you need to work with to develop an effective exercise like that within your college, within a particular department or a team or a meeting or a committee or whatever? And that really links into the kind of actions um, that I would like to conclude with. So uh, basically three things for you to do. First of all, read those materials um, uh, and find them on our website. Secondly, discuss those materials with colleagues. And I think there's four types of people you particularly want to talk to them uh, about the materials with. First of all, colleagues within management, particularly those who have, um, uh, perhaps have leadership responsibility in the learning experience. Secondly, your students, students association, particularly your students association coordinator or advisor or rep coordinator or whatever, who, who will have a, a big role to play in terms of the professional support for, the, for, for, for um, representation and engagement. You'll 
have people um, working within CPD and professional development and, and quality also as well. And you know, it could be that you're, you're taking the officers or or, in, or entire committees to, to get them thinking about how you might use these materials and how they might impact on your CPD program. And obviously, we're we're in the summer just now at the time of recording. There are probably people already thinking about your staff development program. You might typically in August have a staff development week or a staff conference. So is now the time to think about the, the, the place of student engagement within that and to have these conversations. And then so the third action is, is if we can be of any help, let us know. Hopefully the toolkit is somewhat self-explanatory and you know is, is made to be easy to use and take off the shelf and play around with yourself. Um, but um, if we can help at all, then do let us know. And if any questions crop up uh, about the materials, if this re makes you th uh, think about particular processes, then we'd love to hear your views as well. And also we'd love to hear your views as to if there's any kind of chapters in the toolkit that's missing. Are there topics or themes that you'd like us to add? We very much imagine ourselves adding to this over time. I'm seeing in a chat box about um, uh, embedding partnership in all thinking rather than what the learners think at the end. Very much, very good point. It's not simply a case of looking at what learners think, writing that down and doing it. You need to interrogate that and think more sophisticatedly about that. And also, um, do, you, do, you, do you hear about, um, you know, what, what are your sources of what learners think? Is it just a rep turning up saying, well, you know, this is what they think and, and, and that's gospel and you've got to run with it? Or can you, can you look at that much broader source sources of, of data. And there's lots of data out, data sources out there. There's your own college structures. There are externally provided ones like U, Unit U that someone's mentioned in, in the chat box. These are great. You may well find that there are particular tools nationally um, that, that, that work and engaging students in a really good open conversation with staff about the benefits of these tools could be very rewarding. So, um, that's the toolkit. Um, you can find my contact details on, on the Sparks website, and I'm very happy to, to discuss more, take more questions. I see the chat box is flowing with questions, um, but, and obviously I'm happy to chat offline as well for anyone watching the video. So thank you all very much. Thanks, Simon. That, that, that's great. And, and as you know, we will continue the conversation here, but unfortunately, in YouTube land, this is all we have time for. So thanks to everyone for joining us. Thanks, Simon, for, for sharing the toolkit. Um, there's so much there. And, and I think what you said about conversation, that's, that's the key. This isn't a one-time thing. We don't just ask the students at one point in the course. It's a conversation that we carry on throughout and we all improve together. So thanks very much for that, everyone in YouTube land. Until we meet again, stay safe.